Good. So, alrighty then. We are good to go. Isn't it? I mean, I love it. All right, and we can go to the nav. Flaps one. Done. I mean, it's a nice day, an afternoon here in December, and I really think that it looks absolutely convincing. cleared for our final flight level of 240 we can go back to standard barrel 013 
see the haze and the valleys. And it does have some problems with the edges around hills and mountains because sometimes they are very sharp and they are flickering a bit as well and here, here you can see it. They are flickering and they are a little too sharp but that's also something the developers are aware of. So let's hope that will be fixed in a future release. So let's do the left turn right now, because we are clear of the terrain. Isn't that just lovely? Beautiful. I love auto photographic scenery in X-Plane 10. Just, it's the real deal, you know. That's it, Benedict. That's how I feel about it, too. Beautiful clear skies, very nice coloring. I mean, here in the distance you can see how the, how the terrain slowly fades into a bluish haze, which looks absolutely phenomenally real. I love that. I mean, boy, look at that. And normally um, I got these results by tweaking the art controls with the daughter of editor. But I haven't done anything like that at all. There is no real Terra Haze running, no Lua script. Just, you know, you fire up the sim, XNVIRO connects uh, with its server, and that's it. I mean, seriously, isn't that just plain beautiful? That is looking nice. I mean, the problem here with the sharp edges and the flickering. I really hope they will be able to, to solve it. Because that's killing the immersion a little bit for me. But other than that, that's pretty convincing if you ask me. I mean, come on, <laughs> I love it. Everyone knows the real, real uh, brightness of the sun by this time of the year, and especially in the afternoon, if it shines, you know, onto the, onto the ground in this very shallow angle, on oh, that shallow angle, <laughs> complete opposite, this very sharp angle, So it's lighting up these clouds very, very brightly. Here again you can see the flickering. There's a haze layer on the ground and somehow it's conflicting with the terrain. Now we are entering a bit of haze. And here also the haze. I mean, look at that around the mountains. All of that looks absolutely stunning, I think. And then 
there are these regions here to take away a good amount of immersion but once again the developer is fully aware of that and I hope they will fix it very soon Also very nice how one gets a sense of speed when flying over this uh, it's not an exactly an overcast layer but you know this thin cloud layer it looks absolutely stunning Yeah, I tested it already with uh, X-Plane 11 and the results are quite similar. But I have to say that um, X-Plane 10 is still my main sim because although I've got all the planes in, in that sim installed and um, I've got all the auto uh, photo scenery installed and uh, since I'm running everything um, on an SSD, you know, it would be overkill uh, uh, drive space wise to just copy everything into X-Plane 11. For a few tests, I just cut the scenery out of x 10 and put it into x 11, and I really like it. I mean, seriously, x 11 looks extremely realistic for um, a sim uh, just, you know, out of the box, especially considering the fact that it's still beta, and I think mm, just yesterday they released public beta too, and I really like it, but to be absolutely honest, I mean, it's still beta, so there's a way to go. And uh, for the time being, x 10 will be my main sim, no doubt about that. So here's the sun, you can see. So the, e the HDR um, is really taking care of this ultra brightness going on there. can play a bit with the time of day. You see this effect gets even a bit more pronounced if I move the time to around noon. Here's the sun. Let's go even a little earlier here. So I mean, huh? That is looking really nice. So these are the early hours in the morning. Once again, sky color. I mean, I really like it. I really like it. Let's play around a bit here with the time of day. There comes the sun. See here, all of that, I mean, pretty darn nice, isn't it? afternoon here. some artifacts you know of the surrounding terrain yeah well you know it's the one thing I've got um, max FX running And sometimes, you know, if it if you change something like the time of day, it needs a few seconds till everything is uh, sorted out. Now you can see the 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 yeah strange artifacts of the surrounding terrain are gone.
Oh, wrong button. But yeah, this flickering here, I mean... To be honest, that's my main concern as of yet. I mean, um, the missing cloud shadows are a thing... Yeah, I really don't like it all as well. But even worse is this flickering. Which really isn't too nice. If you play around with the time of day a bit too much, you know, everything needs uh, a few seconds or a minute or two to settle down again. are shining through this rather thin layer of clouds. Then once again here this this stuff isn't too nice. Alright, Kevin is nicely pressurized so everything is looking good. Let's grab the meter for Stuttgart. I think there's some kind of overcast going on there as well. Then you hopefully will see um, a break through the clouds, which is really phenomenally beautiful. No, not really overcast. 8,000, few at 100, so very low clouds there as well. Alright, high pressure around this area as well. with. 1032 on QNH. Okay. So, we will be arriving via the Taxi 07 transition onto ILS runway 07. Our frequency is. One zero nine point five, and the course is zero seven two. One zero, uh, one zero nine point five and seventy two on the course. And we are in category D aircraft. 90 will be the position height. That really looks beautiful, doesn't it? I mean, these sky colors very nice and clear blue above the aircraft and with the setting sun here 
illuminating the atmosphere. That is really spectacularly beautiful. Some new lights are already shining through the thin layer of cloud. Good. Check the chat. Yeah, I know Benedict Vater. That's quite funny. Yeah, sure, I, I mean, I am German. <laughs> One can hear it without any doubt because my English sometimes, you know, is just lacking the vocabulary I'm seeking for. Um, yeah, there are some nice uh, jokes concerning waypoint um, names in the US, and I think we have something like that as well here with Vater Unser. Because if you approach into Stuttgart regularly, you will be uh, flying online as well on Vatim or IVO, you will know that there is a um, GPS RNAV waypoint called Unser. And so Vater Unza is quite uh, funny, I think. And I'm with you when you said that atmospheric lightning really is very well done and it never looked any better than that. I mean, I really, really, really loved the results um, I got by tweaking the data ref editor or tweaking the art controls with the data ref editor manually. But um, this here is just even a bit better, I must confess. I do think that I read somewhere that they intend to implement God Rays as well, just as Skymax Pro does. The beautiful IXG banks to the left. I mean, that's... Whew, I love it, really. I watch aviation DVDs very regularly. I love uh, uh, the pilot's eye range and I also have a lot of um, what's the name? Come on. On the internet they are providing previews regularly uh, on their YouTube channel. I don't seem to remember the name. But yeah, I do love watching aviation videos, cockpit videos, and um, if you ask me, that looks glorious. I mean, look at that. That is the beauty of flight, isn't it? So here you can see above this thin overcast layer, there is a bit of storm front with cumulus clouds building up. And I mean, I've never seen anything like that before. Neither in um, ESP sims like FSX or P3D, nor in X-Plane. So, <laughs> I love it. Screenshot done. And here it plants very nicely with the, um, the hills and the mountains as well. I mean, it's occasionally that you have these conflicting um, uh, sharp edges of clouds against the mountains, but that's really not so nice. But this is... Whew, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, that's phenomenally beautiful. Oh my gosh. I love it. That wing view though. So, but not too much sightseeing. 
<laughs> and you know what? We're flying into that, right? Top of descent is approaching. 18 nautical miles to run. I mean, not too bad. Not too bad. I have to take another green screenshot here. CPU load, you know, is absolutely in the green area. 62%, but it's melting my GPU right now. But as, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's just an old 670 with 2 gigabytes of RAM. Which will be replaced by the very end of the year, and I'm really looking forward to this upgrade because it's... Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of necking going on about X Enviro and its its costs, or its cost, you know, I mean, $69 and all the things it doesn't do too good as of yet, but I mean, that isn't too bad at all. So I'm very glad I'm having one of these wow moments with you. Yeah, they are. I mean, the the, the Kumuli, they, they look very nice from the distance. One has to say uh, that the resolution isn't, you know, too crisp. If you fly near them, you can see that the resolution isn't the best. But um, for that reason, the performance is still quite nice, I have to say. I mean, look at that. I mean, really, I mean, look at that. If the nightlight start to show off, come on, and the scenery. Here is that, that haze layer on the ground, then you've got this thin overcast layer in the middle here of the setting sun with building up cumulus clouds and then look at that, I mean, oh boy! <laughs> That's the beauty of aviation right here on my desktop. So, we are nearing top of descent, let me just check that um, start the descent properly. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say, the resolution isn't the highest one. Um, the whole package is, I don't know, 250 megabytes, something like that, uh, as a zip file and not much more if you install it. So, I mean, sure, if you look at cloud add-ons like Rex 4 and that stuff, that's, you know, um, several gigabytes uh, worth of data um, but other than that wow. I'm totally totally blown away <laughs> I'm totally blown away I really am I really am, guys. I really am. Now I'm back to 31 frames per second. Especially if it uh, refreshes the weather. It can happen that... Um, performance goes down a bit not as much as it as it normally happens with Skymix Pro because there it can happen that a performance goes down to single digit numbers Yesterday, wow, look at that in the distance here in in, in, in in building storm front right underneath the the setting sun. What <laughs> then that? Yesterday I did a few test flights and I flew um, into a storm front building up upon a layer a solid layer of overcast, which looked really truly good as well. No, 
not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hi, Giant Unicorn. How are you? My old friend. Yes, I'll be streaming more regularly again. And I'll soon um, be having a new graphics card. Because my poor old GTX 670 gets nailed here brutally. But, I mean, look at that. That's pure awesomeness. Pure beauty going on. Right here. It really is. So, let's not forget the fly <laughs> flying. And I want to set the QNH already because we are um, going down to the final approach fix altitude in one step. So, that will be two, uh, 1032. I also want to do a stream with the Flight Factor 757 version 2. A really beautiful plane. I love flying. Okay, we could use a bit of speed brake here. Yeah, you know, Unicorn, um, it's all up to reasonable settings. I can't complain at all. I mean, I'm running mostly auto uh, photo scenery right now, and here we are in a bit of turbulence. But um, I normally get way above 30 frames per second. If I do stream in 720p on top of it, it goes down a bit. Right now I'm 28, 29, even in heavier weather using Skymix Pro. It never goes normally it never goes below you know 22 something like that and I more or less still use the same settings I used back then when I used to stream regularly but there's no Nvidia inspector or stuff like that going on because you know too much tweaking and stuff sometimes results in the opposite of what you actually want it to do. So you see, actually it's Kavok right now, okay. I see. So that changed because when we took off from, um, from uh, Innsbruck there has been um, an overcast layer at just 300 feet above ground I think. So we'll cross in 10,000 feet anytime soon.
somehow now these um, cumulus clouds are a bit too transparent. Don't know why that is. Yesterday I flew through a solid storm front and was you know just blacked out everything essentially. But yeah, actually there is no um, there is no cloud coverage reported anymore in the uh, most recent media, so maybe that is something like an intermediate state, I don't know. I have no idea. And here you can see the rotating cloud problem that is being reported quite regularly when it comes to X-Enviro. Because most of the clouds are 2D clouds and in order to, to have always the same angle of uh, view onto them, they rotate as, as you near them. So that's the whole thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, I want to use the speed break. Ah. So let's bring down the speed a bit. If we are flying through cloud layers, no, that won't take place right now, I think. Because you then would see reflecting the landing lights and the stop lights. That is interesting. That's one of the quite seldomly occurring bugs in the <laughs> ICG. You can see I'm not able to control the speed for some reason. Oh come on, what's going on? Yeah, here is the cloud layer. Okay. It's looking quite nice again. Actually, there is no wind right now showing on the ND, but we do see quite a bit of turbulence. Okay, now I'm back on 
the schedule. That is good. bit of a, a bummer here, I forgot to turn the other shuttle back on again. Okay, but now we are way off out every uh, uh, way off the profile and stuff, so I'll take just a minute. So here you can see quite sharp edges again. Which is a phenomenon that shows up quite regularly if you're flying through hazy parts. You can see here and here a bit of a halo effect taking place. change of colors and you can see everything looks a bit dull now. that I mean you see the clouds do have a direct impact on the the way the scenery is lit because now actually the colors are more or less you know vanished and they, they look washed out and I, I mean that's beautiful everything was high contrast and very vivid uh, uh, well above the clouds June Cruz face and now you can see everything looks washed out and stuff so I think ooh, the whole atmospheric lighting thing is really working extremely well with that uh, in Exanvaro. I hope for a bit more clouds on the approach to Stuttgart because that is looking just breathtakingly good if you fly through, through these clouds with the strobe lights and landing lights on. Oh wow, I am fired. That's nice. <laughs> 
456 feet per minute. Yeah, not my best approach, not best landing, but you get the idea. I mean, that wasn't about, you know, flying the 737, actually, it was about showing off some of X and Y was magic. And I have to say, uh, yeah, there was some beauty going on.